Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for a very common topic, which is knee arthritis. So worldwide, close to a fourth of individuals over the age of 40 suffer from good old knee osteoarthritis. That is DJD, which is degenerative joint disease, which is the good old wear and tear kind of arthritis. When you look at the options for non-surgical knee osteoarthritis treatment, they really haven't changed much in the last 20 years. We're talking about things like a cane or a brace or anti-inflammatories, uh, potentially narcotics when times get bad, um, steroid injections or hyaluronic acid injections, which a lot of people know as the rooster comb injections. Now, a knee replacement is obviously a last resort. It's an elective procedure. It is not a risk-free procedure. Um, it's typically not permanent. A lot of people have to undergo a revision um, over 15 or 20 years later. I don't know if uh, you realize, but over half of knee replacements are performed on people under the age of 65. So most likely they will need a revision. Um, and the revision rates uh, of success are never as good as the initial. And years ago, we used to think that the success rates for knee replacement were like 90%. And they're actually not. Recent studies, including one in the British Medical Journal a few years back, showed that close to 40% of individuals ex are still experiencing knee pain a year after the joint replacement, which is very concerning because it typically does not go away. It's a permanent procedure. That bridge has been burned, right? So when you look at stem cell therapy for knee arthritis, the way I look at it is you have, let's say you have two sides of a cliff. You know, the side um, on the left would be all of the non-operative treatments I just mentioned, none of which really repair or re regenerate any damaged tissue. They're just a proverbial band-aid. And then on the right side of the cliff, you have a knee replacement, uh, which is a permanent situation. For so long, we didn't have anything in the middle you know, and now we do. We have this new paradigm with stem cell treatment that can actually repair and regenerate that damaged tissue, bridge that gap, and prevent most people from needing to go to the other side. So the goal of stem cell therapy is to um, provide relief, improve function. It's a low-risk procedure. It's outpatient. I'll show you the effectiveness here in a moment. Um, and our protocol is to simply inject uh, the regenerative biologic into the joint um, unless there's something else associated with it, we don't often do an IV procedure unless uh, the patient's also going anti undergoing anti-aging at the same time. So how do the stem cell biologics work? Well, a lot of people think that the stem cells in these biologics, when injected into the knee or hip or wherever, those are the ones that are going to turn into new cartilage, for example. And that's actually not what happens. A lot of it occurs by paracrine signaling, which is basically cell-to-cell -cell communication resulting in new blood flow, um, the body um, not uh, killing off cells as much, um, things like that. Now, neovascularization just means new blood flow. Immunomodulation refers to um, inhibiting the immune system from uh, degrading, for instance, a joint um, I'll give you an example without going too much into the weeds. If you have um, knee arthritis, there are substances in the joint called metalloproteinases that are um, degrading cartilage. Well, immunomodulation can halt those metalloproteinases from acting and help to reduce the degradation of, of cartilage. Anti-apoptosis just means <clears throat> reducing cell death. Um, <clears throat> and then direct mechanisms, there's not a lot we know yet about those. So there's multiple different ways that they work. So let's go through a few studies. Um, there's been a, so much recent work um, and research looking at stem cell therapy for osteoarthritis. Um, so you'll see a lot of these studies are very new. Here's one out of 2020 with 18 patients. Not a large study, but they did separate them into three groups. Um, they either got 10 million or 50 million or 100 million adipose mesenchymal stem cells. The pain relief lasted over a year in all the groups, up to two years in the highest dose, the ones that got 50 million. Now, there is a difference between adipose mesenchymal stem cells and umbilical cord, 
the zygomal stem, stem cells with regard to the proliferative capability, the potency of those stem cells. So it's not a direct comparison, but when we do a joint injection at our centers for knee osteoarthritis, we use uh, either 10 or 15 million umbilical mesenchymal stem cells. Um, so you have to take that into consideration. Those are a little more potent than um, the adipose. So it may be more like using 50 million um, of those. All right, here's a study in 2018, once again with 18 patients. This study looked at cultured bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells. They wanted to see if adding PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, to uh, one of the groups would increase the effectiveness. Um, so both groups showed in significant improvements in pain, function, and daily living activities, sports, recreational activities uh, throughout the year of follow-up. And what they found that PRP addition did not make a difference. Um, both groups did great. Just adding the PRP didn't statistically improve the outcome. Here's another 2020 study. This was actually a literature review, which means they looked back at a bunch of other studies and put the results together. So this included 21 studies, almost 600 patients total. The average age was 50. Um, the average age in most of these studies is between 50 and 60. Um, Anyway, they looked at um, uh, stem cell therapy and then MRI scans that showed uh, a slowed progression of cartilage degeneration and some early signs of cartilage regeneration um, with knee osteoarthritis. And the, the conclusion was that um, mesenchymal stem cell treatments are a superior approach to conventional treatments. They take on a path of stabilizing OA by reducing inflammation, uh, followed by the restoration of damaged cartilage. All right, so here's another study looking at umbilical cord stem cells for knee osteoarthritis. Um, they looked at uh, three groups, one that got um, hyaluronic acid only, another that got 10 million stem cells once, or another one that got another 10 million at six months, so two doses. There's 26 patients, and they separated them into those three groups, and as mentioned, followed them all for one year. So I'm not really going to go through this uh, table here. Um, you could take a snapshot of it and review it if you want, but what you can really see here on the graph is the results. So um, stem cell, whether it was one dose or two dose, was dramatically better than hyaluronic acid. So that's not even on this graph. What you can see in the gray is a single dose, one shot of 10 million stem cells for the year. And the blue is two shots, one at six, one at, you know, right away and then one at six months. So you can see that there's not a humongous difference in how well these people did. Um, they all did great. That's not a big difference in the symptoms. Not too much of a difference, maybe 10% or so, in the pain reduction. Um, and then as far as activities of daily living, a little bit better with a second dose. It was actually in the sports and recreation where a second dose really bumped up the results. So I think for most people, one dose of 10 million stem cells, which is exactly what we do, um, at our centers, sometimes 15 million is fantastic for the full year. We get great results upwards of seven years. Here's another graph showing different um, dosing. Uh, let's see here. So control um, and then 10 million cells, 100 million, two times the 10, uh, two times a million. So the double dose. And they pulled some other results as well, but they're pretty consistent. Okay, so the results are fantastic whether you give one dose or two dose, as I mentioned, except for um, the uh, sports. And then you can see here that the results really fall off if you didn't give anything, if it was a placebo. <clears throat> I do want to mention that uh, at our centers, we do not use embryonic stem cells, otherwise known as uh, fetal stem cells. We don't use induced pluripotent stem cells. None of those are ready for prime time. They just have problems with rejection and tumor formation. So if anyone suggests you should have that for anything, not just knee arthritis, run away, um, give us a call. We can walk you through what you should have. Um, we use stem cell therapy with mesenchymal stem cells, such as from the umbilical cord, hematopoietic stem cells, such as from umbilical cord blood. Uh, those work fantastic for a lot of conditions, not just knee osteoarthritis. So in conclusion, the outcomes of stem cell therapy for knee arthritis have been stellar. Our patient satisfaction rate for umbilical cord stem cells for knee arthritis is 
over 90 percent. Um, I didn't mention it, but there were no significant adverse events for any umbilical cord study. We haven't seen any significant adverse events in over 16,000 procedures at our centers as well. Studies showed reduced cartilage degeneration, and there was some good evidence for increased cartilage formation. The results were long-lasting. If you, if you look at the results of a steroid injection, it's usually two to three weeks. Here, these studies show results for well over a year. As I mentioned, we use 10 to 15 umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells. Some of our clinics do add PRP to increase stem cell activity, but it is questionable based on the results of the studies whether it, it truly adds to the, it's not going to hurt, but you know, is it going to add to the results? And, you know, stem cell therapy is a great way to relieve pain and avoid surgery for knee arthritis. The International Treatment Program, we have centers, um, multiple in Mexico, multiple in Pakistan, Honduras, um, upcoming along with uh, Philippines, um, China will be a re reality fairly soon. And these centers are, are placed, so they're only about 20 minutes from a major airport. Um, the process starts with a free phone consultation. You don't have to leave your house, you know, with, uh, to talk to one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. The patient concierge representative can help get your medical records and also help set up all of your travel um, for your treatment. When you look at the cells that we use, our labs have a pristine safety record. The quality assurance is more stringent than what the FDA requires, even if it's an international clinic, such as in Mexico City for our Mexico clinics. The viability of our cells is extremely high, and we use pure, potent cells that are below the fifth generation of culturing, so they're very pure, potent, and active, much more so than bone marrow or adipose. Um, and when you look at the cost of what we're offering, it's anywhere from 40 to 80% less than it would be in the USA. Our threes won a lot of awards over the last decade. Recently, we won the USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider. Uh, we've also been featured on every major media channel, including uh, 10 best companies of the year 2020, 10 most innovative companies of the year, 50 smartest companies. The way to get started with us is simply to go to r3stem.com. Um, you can see where our clinics are located. You can um, uh, download any brochures you'd like to see on this topic or any other. Um, give us a call on the U.S. Um, line of plus one, 888-988-0515. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to helping you.